Baba, welcome. May Dende Ina Njideka. My name is Mama Njideka, and I welcome you to DIO Do It Ourselves. Yes, I am the Executive Director of Fawahodie Sria Pan African Educational Online Classes. And I am here to take you through a workshop that it's about Africans doing it for ourselves, by ourselves. You don't know what that means? Well, what I've dedicated my life to and what I want you to understand before we end today, it's about doing it ourselves. So let's get right into it. First, we start off with the Black Child's Pledge written by Black Panther member Shirley Williams in 1968. Black Fist Up, I pledge allegiance to my Black people. I pledge to develop my mind and body to the greatest extent possible. I will learn all that I can in order to give my best to my people in their struggle for liberation. I will keep myself physically fit, building a strong body, free from drugs and other substances that weaken me and make me less capable of protecting myself, my family, and my black brothers and sisters. I will unselfishly share my knowledge and understanding with them in order to bring about change more quickly. I will discipline myself to direct my energies thoughtfully and constructively rather than wasting them in idle hatred. I will train myself never to hurt or allow others to harm my black brothers and sisters. For I recognize that we need every black man, woman, and child to be physically mentally and psychologically strong. These principles we pledge to practice daily and to teach them to others in order to unite our people. Ashe, Ashe, Asheo. Okay, so let's get right into it, sisters and brothers. We're gonna talk about, first of all, our basic needs for human survival. Let's start off with that. Can you think of some basic needs that you need in order to stay alive? Well, of course, air, we need oxygen, and that's always there. But can you think of some other factors? Well, let's, let's take a look. Food, mm-hmm, water, absolutely. Clothing, did you think of that? shelter. And here's one that I consider a basic need for survival, security. Because you may have a food source, water source, clothing and shelter, but if you don't have any mechanisms in place to secure it down and defend against enemies, it's all chakla, as the librarians say, yes. Okay, so you know what? The quality of your food, the quality of your water and clothing and shelter makes a big difference in the quality of your life. The availability of it and the degree of control, they all make a big difference in how you live your life and your ability for self-determination. In other words, how you are able to govern those basic needs in your life. Does that make sense? So once you are able to acquire those basic needs, particularly around water sources, life flourishes. People begin to populate in areas in which it has the ability to provide those basic needs and even secondary needs. Let's quickly talk about the different 
political, geographical um, populated areas yeah, that humans have defined. So in small gatherings with no definite borders, those are called villages. It's a small community in a rural area. Yes, a town. A town is a, a bigger village. It's more populated and it has fixed boundaries and it has a local government. Some villages have a small governing unit, but towns definitely do. And moving on to the city, a city is a large or important town. And we usually refer to it as an urban area. And cities normally do not have uh, agriculture going around it. Although nowadays you have rooftop uh, gardens and urban farms and cities, but normally cities are without the, the um, signs of rural life, yes? Over here, I have sovereign state. Of course, we all are familiar with uh, states, but I wanted to talk about sovereign state. A state and sovereign state are basically a defined territory that administers its own government and it's not subject to or dependent upon another power. That's a country as well. I have a graphic here of Africa, particularly focused on Ghana. And you would say, well, Ghana is a country, but Ghana is also a sovereign state. So Liberia, Nigeria, those all would be considered sovereign states. Something to keep in mind. Now let's move on to nation. Including myself, a lot of times I will use nation and country interchangeably, but nation by definition is not necessarily a country. Nation is a large body of people united by common descent, meaning that through blood, their history, their culture, or language inhabiting a particular country or territory. So in other words, a nation is basically a group of people who are connected together through culture, okay? So a country is not necessarily a nation per se, and a nation is um, not necessarily a country, okay? All right, so this map of our motherland, what will we call it? I have a question for you. Is it good enough? Is it appropriate to aim for African nation building? As we all say all the time, including myself, we are aiming for nation building. Is nation, using the word nation, enough? I would say no, per definition. Nation state or nation sovereign state building would be more appropriate, in my opinion. Just keep those in mind. So we could call our motherland the United States of Africa. That is what we are aiming for, the United States nation states of Africa. Well, as you know, there was a particular phenomenon in our, our story, transatlantic slave trade or the triangular trade. Today's webinar or today's workshop that we won't get into it, however, through the phenomena of the triangular trade, it, it transported our brothers and sisters, our ancestors throughout the world, particularly in the Americas. Yeah, okay. So with that being said, we landed here in the Americas and then fast forwarding to today, where you live right now, young people, where you live right now, I'll ask you, do you have food? Most of you do. You have water, most of you do, clothing, shelter, and even some form of security, yes? Yeah? So you feel like, what's the deal? Why are we trying to nation build somewhere else when I'm comfortable, yes? 
Okay. Well, how's the quality of your food and water? How's the quality? And how is your ability to govern all of these elements? Do you have the freedom? Do you have the opportunity to govern all of these basic needs? The answer really is no. Okay, we are looking for the opportunity. We have to make the opportunity to attain our ability to control every aspect of our lives, such as education, such as land. We want to own, we want to govern our land. We want to take, we want to take control of our culture, our money system, economics, yes? Governance, our ability to govern ourselves, food and water system, and our ability to secure everything that we need, the military. You know, let's go back up to this sovereignty. What does sovereignty mean? We are in full control of ourselves and our destiny. That's what sovereignty means. So if you've been hearing the word sovereignty, we want to be clear as to what we want to be sovereign on, and we want to be clear on what we want to be in control of. And these components right here are not all, but many of the main areas that, we, that I need for you young people to focus on. Not everybody is going to be in the military. Not everybody is going to be focused on education, but keep all of those components in mind. Now, what is our sovereign nation state without the mechanisms in order to build certain structures that will help us to live the life that we need to live, to survive and to thrive? That the systems are called infrastructure. Infrastructure are the basic necessary structures and systems that help and keep a populated permanent space of people going to thrive, to survive, and to sur survive and to sur thrive. So some examples of infrastructure, transportation our roads, our waterways, yes? How are they helpful? Well, it helps us to get from one place to the other and faster, helps us to get there faster. And it also can also be a means of travel that makes it safer for us. Another example of infrastructure, communication system, yes. So our ability to communicate with each other, to work, to build, to go through the process of life through communication system. That is another example of infrastructure. Power plants. Any structure or any system that helps provide energy for us, power for us, would be considered infrastructure and as you can see this is a whole field of solar power panels last but not least and definitely not the end of infrastructure examples schools yes yeah, schools or school system would be considered infrastructure and you know that we absolutely need those entities that give us the ability to strengthen our knowledge base and broaden our skill sets, yes? All right, so those are examples of infrastructure. You got it? All right, let's move on. So infrastructure is fundamental, it's very important for our sovereign nation building. Infrastructure designers and builders are important. The actual people who are building and designing and planning and putting things together. Some of them are called engineers. They're very important. And guess what? You could be an infrastructure builder, an infrastructure planner. And it doesn't matter if you are male or female. 
So please consider this very, very, very important uh, career. So there are engineers out there who have been hired to create infrastructure that will, will enhance or help a uh, territory um, grow or to flow better. And uh, the engineer comes in and basically suggests all kinds of materials that are not, uh, that pollute the earth, that are not um, natural. They're man-made, um, they're toxic, um, they charge a lot of money, um, they're not very nice people. Those are all signs of a, of, a, of a person or a people who are very disconnected from the, the heart or the soul of the people or the heart or the soul of the earth. You have a, a whole uh, occupation of people that could be working in harmony with nature, but instead, because they are disconnected, it leads to um, many destructive things. What causes basic disconnection from Asasaya, from Mother Earth, from the people? Well, you know what? For years and years and years now, we have been so isolated, so disconnected from just being out in nature. Yeah, and being inside, inside under artificial light, not getting um, the natural life force to connect with our life force lowers our frequency. And you know what? Even though elevated houses serve a very good purpose, especially in these days and time when there's a lot of flooding in many areas, but elevated homes such as this one disconnects you from being close to the earth. And being close closely connected to the earth, um, you are able to literally um, absorb the electromagnetic forces or energies that come from the earth. That's what grounding is all about. That's what earthing is all about. Yeah. And even your shoes, even your shoes, especially rubber sole shoes, because, you know, rubber doesn't um, allow electricity to go through it so you're walking around with tennis shoes on but you're basically disconnected from earth some people feel like the higher they get off the earth the better they are <laughs> us women uh, but that's not the case and you actually are damaging yourself physically mentally and spiritually by doing that the effects of being disconnected from nature well if you happen to be in control of a lot of things, you have a lot of money, um, money speaks, money shows kind of what's in your heart. So if you use your money to pollute the skies and to devastate nature and to devastate the lives of people, that is a sure sign that you are disconnected and that is not good. Anti-nature, some, some of the signs of, of being disconnected is that you just, you show that you are anti-nature, you're not kind to nature or other people, and you don't have a sense of embracing, nurturing, right, the earth, your family. Being anti-woman or anti-African, when you are disconnected, you don't appreciate those groupings of people or certain gender who naturally are connected and, and sensitive and nurturing. You're anti that. And what happens is that you become very competitive and you want to like crush them and you're jealous and you want to take what they have. And, um, it's not good. This anti-feminine qualities, even women can be um, culprits of being anti-feminine qualities. Oh, you don't want to be, 
you want to snuff down your emotions. Emotions are bad. Being super sensitive is a bad thing. Being super sensitive, mothers to your children, being super sensitive to your brothers and sisters who are in need, being super sensitive to nature in order to connect with it is what, that's the name of the game. Being oversensitive and over emotional and all of that, that can lead to problems. But what is in our nature, that's what we actually need to encourage to come out. Speaking of nature and those persons who are in control of um, running things, deforestation is a huge problem on a Sasaya. Deforestation is just what it sounds like. It removes a huge portion of the forest. And you know, the forest is the home of many animals, yes? Soil erosion. When there's no more vital nutrients in the soil because the top layer of the soil has been washed away or driven away, um, it doesn't make for fertile living. I just want to introduce you to a beautiful ancestor, Wangari Mathai. She was a very intelligent and in-tuned Kenyan woman who was strong in social and environmental and political events that took place in Kenya where there was deforestation. And so what does she do in the Green Belt Movement? She and women and men took it upon themselves to grow, replace thousands and thousands of trees in her area. She has a quote here, culture defines who we are and how we see ourselves. A new attitude toward nature provides space for a new attitude toward culture and the role it plays in sustainable development. Yes, indeed. We give thanks to you, Nana Wangari Mathai. Ashe. Some African lessons to take heart. Being in the motherland, we have learned many things being connected to nature and to ourselves. I want you to repeat after me. When we take, mm -hmm, we give back. When we take, we take only what we need. Prior to the taking of life, we perform, we perform a ritual. To honor this life, giving thanks. In other words, if we do take the life out of anything, whether it's cutting down a tree, or pulling up um, uh, plants in order to consume them, we say thank you at least before we do it. And again, we're honoring our ancestor. Once again, I'm showing you the transatlantic slave trade because that takes us into our food session. You know, the ma'afa, which is the great disaster, right? And it's really remnants of it is still going on, yes? So what does that have to do with food? Because it changed our, coming over here to the Americas obviously changed our food, what we consumed, but how we ate it and how we prepared it. And as a result of the ma'afa, we, we um, inherited some very destructive foods and food preparation methods, such as eating pig intestines. You know what runs through intestines, but yet this is something that we survived on for many, many years. Yes, and some of us still do. But when you think about it, and if you have options, mm -mm, that deep frying food, so corn, was readily available to our enslaved Africans. 
And so getting a small little bucket of cornmeal, a couple of pieces of fish maybe, and some fat back, that was a typical ration for uh, a, an, an enslaved African for a week. And so we found a way to work with the cornmeal. Um, deep frying is just a food preparation um, method, but it has uh, dire physical um, consequences. So cooking our food to death, it was one way to, it was one way to help our body to digest the tough leaves that was available. Right, so nowadays we just love us some collard greens and we love other types of tough brassica and other plants. And some of them are a bit tough to digest, but to overcook things, we're doing what? We cook out the nutrition. And then even though processed foods didn't come much later, it is still a um, means of food that um, has played devastating, it played a, it's played a devastating role in our uh, physical being. I call it the Ma'afa legacy diet as opposed to live it. It's our Ma'afa legacy diet consequences. And so young people, it's up to you to change this legacy, break the curse, take us in a new direction from diet to live it for transformation to food liberation. And these are the foods, these are the foods that we have to engage in. The best foods for nutrient absorption, elimination, and just overall optimal health. They are plant-based, nutrition-rich foods, fresh or minimally cooked, high fiber, absolutely no genetic modified organisms, and organic, meaning no pesticides or fungicides or all those acides that have been applied to the plants while they were growing, yeah. So as we get closer to the end of our workshop, I want to just take you through quickly uh, a few more categories that uh, we want to cover if we're talking about doing it ourselves. Yeah. So our people were engaged in creating our own fabric, creating our own threads to make the fabric, and then of course um, taking the fabric and uh, sewing our clothes. We were, we developed the infrastructure and we created the sewing methods in order to do that a long time ago. Clearly our people sewed for ourselves and, and, and for the most part we had to, but that was okay. But what about today? If you get a rip in your clothes, do you repair them? No, you usually go to Walmart or someplace and, and replace them right away. This little girl says, Janae's parents buy her clothes all the time. Grandma says, child, you better sew your own. And why should you sew your own? Well, sewing your own can save you money. You can make money too if you sew for others. And if you have not very many clothes and maybe not a lot of money, out of need. And for personal expression, you don't have to buy the drabby European clothes at most of these stores. You can, you can put your own flair onto them. And of course, it contributes to the African community and that is very, very important. Basic ways to sew. Basically, there's two basic ways of sewing. There's hand sewing, and then there's sewing by the sewing machine, with the sewing machine. Do you know who this ancestor is? That's Rosa Parks. Did you know that she was a seamstress? That was her occupation. And here she is sewing like she always did. And one day, you know the rest of the story. She was tired after she got off of work. All she wanted to do was to go home. But what happened? You know the story. So let's talk about quickly the basic sewing supplies. You need an iron, 
scissors, thread and needle, and a sewing machine. Right, iron, scissors, thread and needle, sewing machine, and of course the fabric too. So you know what? You can actually go ahead and start gathering up those supplies so that that'll set you on a path of getting ready to do some sewing. This takes us into our last and final section that we'll talk about today. And the last final section is survival and security. Very, very important. The question I have here is, you need these skills, these survival skills, why? Well, when natural disasters hit you, we are in a time in which um, as somebody's vice president says that there's no more um, hurricanes today than there was 100 years ago. But would you agree that they're getting more intense and much more deadly, deadlier? They're deadlier nowadays. And so when natural disasters hit you, flooding, uh, tornadoes, or even lightning strikes, hurricanes, all of those things, you have to be ready. And when disaster hits, a lot of people flock to the store in order to buy supplies. Well, when you get there and you see a store looking like this, that's going to make you not feel too good. You remember Katrina? And really, even since then, there's been a lot of disasters in which our people have been left with nothing. And you don't want to find yourself in that situation. Those are natural disasters, but there are man-made disasters as well that you have to be aware of. You do not want your head in the sand thinking it'll never happen to you. It has happened to our people in the past, uh, especially if you are doing well for yourself, and it can happen for us any minute, especially under this administration and the times that we're in the political turmoils. Okay, so people can, a grouping of people can lose their mind and come after you, come after Black people, come after Africans, and uh, create a situation in which you have to go into hiding. This is another situation in which, um, you know, someone in a higher office says, everyone get off the streets, and we're going to come and round up certain people. So you have to Hide, go into hiding, don't you? And so even if it's a matter of just being um, uh, quarantined or locked in your house for whatever reason, you want to make sure that your home is equipped. You have everything for those basic survival needs. You want to have food and water. You want to make sure that your shelter is adequate, your clothing, you've got something. And then, of course, to be able to um, defend or protect what you have. What happens if your shelter is been destroyed, has been destroyed? Um, you know what? There are simple ways of just creating a, an emergency shelter. And all you need sometimes is just a big raincoat. If you happen to have tarp around, um, if you happen to find yourself out in the, in the woods or outside, then you can use trees in order to rig up uh, an emergency shelter. They call these what you see in front of you, lean-tos, lean-tos. Yes, so really just a tarp or um, a raincoat or even a blanket or a sheet. But blankets and sheets don't repel water. So in case it's raining, you want something that's waterproof. So even a big thing of plastic would um, be useful. Uh, a rope, right? A rope or even um, you can just string um, clothes together, tie them to trees and then throw your tarp or your whatever large, um, large uh, piece of fabric that you have, throw it over there and you can rig up a lean-to and that can help in need. In order to protect the properties and homes in our African nation state, 
it is absolutely necessary to develop a multi-level security system, multi-level, right? So our African nation state needs a nationwide or a, a, a national wide military force. Someone, some groupings of brothers and sisters who are trained in order to su support and secure our nation, yes? Intelligence network. What is intelligence network? We'll talk about it here in a second. And then even right down to uh, skill set, martial arts skill set training for our everyday brothers and sisters. And lastly, property and home security. Yeah, so our United Armed Military Forces would include forces that fight on land, in the sea, and even in the air and space. Space, you may say, that's funny, but there are already military, uh, there's already military, um, um, uh, <laughs> the military is up there in space, I'm just letting you know. And so Africans, we have to have our ability to defend ourselves from that um, area as well intelligence system. So intelligence basically is uh, an entity that collects and analyzes and delivers information to our leaders in order for them to make certain decisions. Counterintelligence is uh, along the same system, but they are basically keeping an eye on and even uh, uh, shielding from enemies enemy territory, um, trying to prevent them from penetrating into our business, basically. So that's very, very important. And we need intelligence from a national and local level. And then again, lastly, martial training for the community. So grandma, uh, you know, little Kwame here, sister Af Afia, uh, everybody needs to have some form of training so that we can protect ourselves, our home, our family, and our community, and ultimately our nation state. So you, as youth, you have to believe in the type of freedom, the type of liberation that we're talking about, and say to yourself that you will achieve. We as youth will achieve our deserved sovereign nation country. Long live the United Nation States of Africa. Abibi Fahodie is what you say. Abibi Fahodie is what we all say. So mamas and babas and young people, if you want to know more, and are ready to continue learning about sovereignty, infrastructure, how to secure your family, your nation state, how to make simple products, but very beneficial products for yourselves, your family and community. I invite you to join me in our upcoming DIO or do it ourselves class. We have on demand classes uh, coming soon. Check our, um, check our website for on-demand classes in which I won't be there, but you can turn it on and learn at your own pace. Uh, but starting January 2021, in which I will be in Ghana, West Africa, to live, we will have live online classes once again, and DO will be offered there. So we definitely look forward to seeing you very, very soon. With every nation, nation state, there's usually um, an anthem that brings and unites people together, yes? Well, Dio has its own anthem chat, and I'd like to close us out on it. Want to repeat after me? Okay. We do it ourselves. Your turn. For the sovereignty of our people. Mm -hmm. We do it ourselves for the love of Africa. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So I'm going to sing the whole song together. Here we go. One, two, three, let's go. We do it ourselves for the sovereignty of our people. We do it ourselves for the love of Africa. Yeah. We do it ourselves for the sovereignty of our people. We do it ourselves for the love of Africa. Dio! Midasi pa pa pa. Thank you so much and continue to enjoy the rest of the Black Sustainability Summit. Thank you to the Summit Core crew for just doing a great job. Thank you for the invitation. Abibi Fahodie, Africans. Woo! Mo, 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 mo. Mo, mo, mo. Midasi, midasi. African family, can you hear my voice? Ah, yes, we can. Ooh, good, good, good. So uh, it, I'm full of love. I'm seeing my beautiful Africans uh, in front of me, and I see you in the in our participant list. And so, family, I appreciate you coming. Could have been other places, but you chose to be here. I hope young people are. Some young people are either hearing it now or they'll hear it uh, soon. But we thank you. Um, so you saw me smiling and clapping, and there were some humorous parts of the video. Um, but as you know, all of those components that I covered are very, very serious topics. With young people, it's kind of this interesting balance of let's uh, tap into their self regenerative power, right? So that I got to be animated and loud and and even smiling and clapping, but we got to keep it real. I do not want to sugarcoat anything, right? We can't because of the times that we have in and the times that we are in right now. So I just want to say thank you for giving me the platform to keep it real for you, for our young people, and we'll continue to do so. Sisters and brothers, any questions? Ooh, more, more, more. I think your, your, your audio is going a little in and out. Um, and I felt the energy all at the same time. So that's, that's all, that's all we ask for. Um, I, there are questions. I think I see something here. Um, some people are mentioning that your voice is choppy. I love your presentation so far as needed for youth and adults. They've been awakened to remind themselves of the need to rethink dismantling their systems and norms. Um, let's see, someone has it unmuted. You all have, have questions? Mama no Bantu. Oh. No, oh yeah, we can see you. You did a wardrobe change. I did, I had to go somewhere. <laughs> Beautiful, okay. Well, I was gonna use her. Um... Yeah, so maybe my phone? Yeah. So okay, that... it needs to be char needs to be charging. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, Sister job. Raina, go ahead and feed me questions. Okay. That's much clearer. That's much clearer now. Okay. okay. You all have the ability to unmute your microphones. Let's do it in the spirit of our voices first, and then I'll take any questions that are put over in the chat for our sister in Angedeka. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to unmute or are you just turning your video on? Bookman, I see you here. In the Greetings, brother. Space. Greetings. Greetings, family. Uh, Greetings. Uh, I was going in and out, uh, but I was able to see uh, some of the lecture. But uh, we're very happy to see you. Uh, I'm, I don't have a question about the lecture, but I want to know how are you feeling about uh, uh, going back home? So, are you feeling going back home? And uh, I'm really excited. So, I'm excited to hear of, of, your, of your future. Uh, all the beautiful things you'll do for our people. I'm, I'm excited about that. How are you feeling? Medasi, brother. Hopefully, you can hear my voice, oh, yeah. everyone. Sister Raina, let me know if you can't hear me, but um, I'll just comment on that real quickly. 
I, you all heard me say that I'm leaving for Ghana on Monday. And so, um, just because I've left the United States of America, voice, does it mean? Waking up again. Yo, okay. Yes. Um, basically, I'm going to continue the work in the motherland. You caught that? I'm going to continue the work in the motherland. It won't stop. I got that. Yes, ma'am. Mendasi. Yes, ma uh, where are you going to be exactly? Which, which side of, of the country are you going to be? I'll be over. Part. Say that again. Which part of the country are you going to be in? Right. So I'll be in um, uh, Greater Accra, just east of East okay, okay. Uh, Legon, east of the University okay. of Ghana. For now. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And family, if you're interested. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Give thanks, brother. I, know, I, I, question, so. okay. I was just gonna say that um, the link was the link to my website, and the link and the information for our continuation of classes was on my slide presentation. But I'll never you www.awomodh3ed.com is our website. The on-demand classes are up. They're up. So, um, you know, while I'm transitioning from here to there, your young people can go ahead and really pick up uh, from the information that I shared today. You can, can pick up that information and keep going and build and learn and ask me questions. My email works. What's that number? Works? Okay. And she said to learn and come ask her questions. It's, it is getting choppy. And at the same time, the beautiful piece is she's already submitted that presentation so you all can see it, rewatch it again, get the contact information for Jorge Yeshua. Does anyone else have any questions um, before? I know that the next session is coming up at five. We want to make sure that we allow you all to ask your questions because we can get them on the chat as they come in. You all can direct message uh, in a Jadeka through this Hoover platform and your questions will live on so we can come back to them as well. But if you wanna unmute your microphone, now is the time um, to ask her any questions on your heart or spirit. And or the, can, if you can hear me okay, I just wanna say that, that next, this next panel, the homeschooling panel with um, Queen Thais and sister Khadija is gonna be outstanding. Um, you know, homeschooling our children is an act of, it's a revolutionary act. And as you saw from my presentation, education, being having sovereign education is important. So that's what they're going to be talking about. So I, I saw your mic unmute and I was going to say, oh, let's okay. go to Hope and then we'll go over to Mark. Uh, we'll come, we'll come back to you, Mark. Go ahead, Hope. Or you ready to, excuse me, Mapacho. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it means hope in Yoruba. So, so um, I was wondering, um, what suggestions do you have for children that don't have conscious parents? Many children out there, um, I left, I, I asked the question in the chat. I know it's long, but how do we try to get kids to eat healthy uh, that don't have conscious parents? Um, in schools, I see so much, when I substitute, I see so much fresh fruit food thrown away, kids would literally rather starve than eat healthy food because, uh, you know, the addictive properties in those chemicals in food make them crave chips and all that and Takis. Um, Taki addiction is hurting our, the kids' stomachs. Um, what suggestions do you have um, to try to get kids that don't live in a good environment to, to eat healthy? Because I see that as a big problem. Sister, so um, in, in regards to the, you know, certain family members who have the ability to oppress and keep the legacy, certain legacies of oppression um, going, um, we don't necessarily fault them. There's intentional oppression. I'm going to eat what I've been, what my mother fed me, and you're going to eat what I feed you is that type of obstinate thinking that is very, very detrimental and makes it hard for the young person to dig themselves out until they reach a certain age where they can create more independence for themselves. Yeah. 
And that's part of the answer. Sometimes, first of all, awareness. So the education, uh, building the knowledge base of the young person. So if it's you that has some control over the young person, get them in as many situations as, as possible that reinforces their political awareness, their cultural awareness, especially, you know, of course the health and that's holistic health. You may be very healthy eating, um, but then you're a bad person. And so they kind of cancel. So the spiritual connectedness, all of that, encourage them or put them into those situations that reinforce, help build that knowledge and skill set base. And then if you are there to support them, do the best that you can. But of course, if you're outnumbered by either one or many persons who don't feel like you do, you know what? You don't give up. You And you encourage your young person, don't give up. It may not happen now. The change may not happen now, but persistence and and accompanied by um, positive spiritual forces, you know, you're calling upon those um, unseen forces that guide you at every step of the way. Um, mm -hmm. That type of tenacity, sister, will win the war. We will be victorious. Okay. Um, we will be victorious with tenacity. And, and okay. encourage the young person to not... Uh, so it's easier said than done, but not to give in to the outside pressure. So help them, help them with that. Even if you mm -hmm. feel the pressure, no, just keep on going because ultimately we're for, the ultimate goal is victory. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm just amazed at how many children will not even eat an orange or an apple. I mean, it's to that point where they throw away hundreds every day. The children never eat fresh fruit. Fruit, and it, it's just—it's amazing. I yes. mean, it's, it's it's so sad. Accessibility is important as well. So the the skill set, the knowledge base, but accessibility as well. So if you saw in the presentation, uh, it's five o'clock. So I'm going to wrap up my comment. I think Mama Nobantu wanted to say something quickly. Um, if you have to go, I understand. Go ahead and connect over to that great panel. But I was just going to say that um, educating those persons who can make accessibility um, accessible to young people and families at large, educating them so that they can do what they can do, especially if they have the resources. And I'll end on that. Um, Greetings. Um, in the school that I ran in California, um, when we grew our vegetable garden. We were the first to do that uh, back in the day. It was like 30 years ago. Um, my parents told me that their children would not eat salads. And so, but when we grew the salad and all the ingredients to go with the salad, once a week, we would make a huge big bowl of salad and every child ate it and loved it. The other thing is watching food grow. If you're in an area where you can grow those fruits, children usually are proud of what they've grown and they'll eat. Uh, whatever they've grown, you know, because I know parents would bypass our garden and go to the store and, and buy everything that was in our garden because they thought it was dirty. You know, it really took a lot of education. The other thing that I did was um, uh, Africa, what's the brother, wrote the book, who just Lay Africa. Lay Africa. I use that as my um, educational health piece. And my kids got so tired of listening to it, some of them would put their fingers in their ears because they didn't want to hear it. Now I want to hear it. You know, and I would show them how they how they raise chickens and the things like that, and that turned a whole bunch of kids off the of chicken. So sometimes okay. we have to send them some videos that shows exactly how things are made, how these foods are processed, and it really will turn uh, a lot of children around and their parents, and they, they won't eat what their parents put in their plate. They'll stop eating it. But anyway, that's my input. Thank you. Oh, please send that to me. Um, the that name of that book oh, um, in the chat. Layla Africa, um, holistic, what is it? Holistic, uh, ooh, holistic, help me out y'all because I have two copies but I've had it for such a long time. Um, but Layla spells his name L-L-A-I-L-A -L -L -A, and then Africa with a K. Okay. Um, then a, she's talking Asante about- Asante Sana. 
um, Sakitu sister. Factory farming and different um, destructive ways of raising um, livestock um, to, to mass feed. It, just Google in factory farming and those videos are nasty enough. That'll turn a lot of people off. So I won't hold you any longer. Um, One African love, Abibi Fahodie and World African Sovereignty and give thanks to Reina and the crew and I'll continue to see you all as the summit continues. Midasaka. Rock the Plymouth Rock, and now it's only black stones that I turn over and turn our teach and show. Warriors mode, I'm beating for holding day through this for the culture. Beat them like they stole you from home, bruh. Watch for your own brothers, turn snakes, blood turn cold.